it was not correct to ban Donald Trump. I think that was, that was a mistake um, because it, uh, it alienated a large part of the country and did not ultimately result in Donald Trump not having a voice. He is now going to be on Truth Social. Banning Trump from Twitter didn't end Trump's voice. It will amplify it among the right. And this is why it is morally wrong and flat out stupid. He's on Truth Social and not getting much traction. Elon Musk said today he would reverse Trump's permanent ban on Twitter if his deal to buy the social media giant goes through. With us tonight to discuss, Maria Teresa Kumar, the president and CEO of Voto Latino, also an MSNBC contributor. Maria, always good to see you. Trump has already said that he will not return to Twitter. But if he does, who should be more worried, Democrats or Republicans? I would say the most, the people that are most worried are the people that have been impacted by what Trump did on Twitter. And what I refer that to that is, Stephanie, is that the El Paso shooter was inspired by what the president said and sadly got into a car and drove 10 hours to have the most, the, the biggest terrorist attack in our nation's history since the Oklahoma City bombing. This man, if you recall, in 2020, killed almost 23 people because he had been inspired by what Trump had said about the Mexican invasion. We all need to look at what happened in Pittsburgh with the synagogue where there was a massive killing. Again, people that were inspired by President Trump. Words have consequences. He was using his position on Twitter and elsewhere to encourage violence, divisiveness, and to break up the country in ways that we have not seen. And so when Elon Musk speaks, Stephanie, saying that we need to make sure that President Trump has a space to ensure that the rest of the country can hear him because he has followers, those followers have a tendency of being extreme violent and causing harm. It translates from what is said online to real life violence. So I encourage Elon Musk to talk to the most marginalized among us who are incredibly vulnerable to the hate speech that happens when Trump is on Twitter. Let's talk about somebody else's words. Trump's former defense secretary, Mark Esper, he's continued his book tour today. And I wanna share a bit of what he said to our colleague, Nicole Wallace. Not everybody who served in the Trump administration was a bad person. And it goes back to there were a lot of good people serving, not because they were there to serve Donald Trump or, or the Republican Party. They were there to serve the country. We need good people to serve because, look, if good people don't serve, who are you left with? OK, even if what he's saying is absolutely right, hallelujah, praise the Lord. I want to know, who is the target audience for Mark Esper's book? for Deborah Burks's book, for Bill Barr's book. It's clearly not Trump supporters, and people who don't support Donald Trump aren't buying into any of this. They're saying, why the heck didn't you do anything when you were in office? Nobody wants to hear about it now. Who are they writing these books for? For themselves, and to the idea that there, it's a very lucrative position to come out of an administration as volatile and divisive as Trump was, and to have a book deal and then go on tour. And shame on those folks that uh, pay to listen to those lectures, because yes, good people can be in these positions of power, but if you don't use it to warn the American public during the time in office where he could have been removed before causing great harm, they are complicit. Uh, it's oftentimes says, well, you know, people feel better at night sometimes saying, well, I'm there for all the good reasons. But it's not all the good reasons if you wait until the last, you know, until the very end after all is done and then you're trying to make a buck. We could agree on that, Stephanie. <laughs> well, let's talk about the very end before they left office, because Esper, Barr, especially Mike Pence, they have all been enablers and apologists for a very long time. But in the end, when Trump wanted to overturn the election, did they save us? from a lot worse. Imagine if Matt Gates and Jim Justice were in those jobs. Jim Jordan. Well, I mean, we could say, we could, right, yeah, no, we, we could speculate, but at the same time, when it came, I mean, not just Esper and them, but we also, the Republicans, Mitch McConnell and McCarthy, they were all recognizing that this president was unstable, but instead of giving the, you know, using their authority and warning the American people that this man is unstable, instead, they're either in book tours or now, you know, backtracking and giving him, the, Donald Trump, a space to potentially run again for 2024. A twice impeached president, one, because he was trying to exploit uh, Ukraine, 
in, or, in order to get it, go after a presidential candidate, his opponent. And two, be, he was impeached because he was trying to overthrow a fair, free election. He shouldn't be eligible for office. Instead, they should make sure that they, the DOJ is doing their job and ensuring that he is actually going to jail for the crimes that he's committed against the country. Well, don't hold your breath on that one. Maria Teresa Kumar, thank you for joining us tonight.